So by the time I was nine years old, I had been physically, sexually, and emotionally abused by family members. Some of the easy warning signs to spot, um, unexplained somatic symptoms, so stomach aches, headaches that are occurring for no um, apparent medical reason, um, kids wearing inappropriate clothing for the weather, so wearing long sleeves when it's really hot outside, they were potty trained and all of a sudden they um, are wetting the bed or, or having accidents, they're having nightmares, um, any type of change in their behavior that comes on unexpected usually is a sign that something um, is, is going on in their lives. I was a good student, I was always on honor roll, I was successful in um, the extracurricular activities that I participated in, I was also um, a great track and field athlete and so I think because I had these positive things going for myself, um, people saw that and they focused on that and so I was easily went under the radar and people uh, weren't able to detect uh, the, si the little subtle signs of the abuse that I was going through. In my experience, it's not an easy thing to call the hotline, um, especially if you know the family that you are suspecting there's some child abuse or neglect going on, um, but it's really important. I've had a lot of um, adults tell me, you know, I don't want to call the hotline because what if I'm wrong? And typically my response to them is always, but what if you're not? It's not a reporter's responsibility to have proof that the abuse or neglect is happening. They just have to suspect it. I want to say I was 10 years old when I called the police. Um, my mom and dad were in the midst of an altercation and I was very scared. My sisters were scared. And when the police arrived, they said that um, they received a 911 call and my dad told them that it must have been the neighbors who had called um, because it wasn't our house. And they spoke with me and asked me, um, what was happening and if we had anywhere to go. And they took me and my two younger siblings to um, my grandparents' house. That same day, my mom came and picked us up and took us back home. And I think that's when I lost my voice and that's when I stopped reaching out for help. The child discloses abuse or neglect to you. The most important thing you can tell them is, I believe you. I'm here to keep you safe. Thank you for telling me. I believe you. That's all you need to say to them. You don't need to keep asking them questions um, because if they're disclosing to you, they trust you, you need to do the right thing and call the hotline. I was at track practice one day and I had bruises and scratches all over my chest and I try to cover them up with band-aids. Um, and one of my track teammates saw that and I believe she went to go tell the track coach. My track coach um, tried to intervene and talk to my parents to see if there's something going on at home. And that's what ultimately led to me going to go live with my aunt in Indiana. Um, it really is up to adults to know the process, to know the signs, the symptoms, um, because we are responsible for protecting these little kids who um, don't have a voice themselves. So um, I encourage anybody, if you suspect any abuse or neglect, please call the hotline. Let the people who are trained and educated to, to do that work determine um, because it really is you're keeping a kid safe um, if they are being abused or neglected.